What is a chemical bond? A chemical bond is an attractive interaction that binds atoms together through a sharing of electron density. The simplest bonding arrangement involves just two electrons shared between nuclei such that each effectively has a stable octet of eight valence electrons, or just two in the case of HH. When two atoms are sharing a total of two electrons between them, the atoms are referred to as singly bonded to each other. Bonds are what hold atoms together in molecules, and they are usually not easily broken. The arrangement of atoms in a molecule determines the identity of a chemical compound. The making or breaking of bonds is a chemical reaction, which converts one chemical compound into another. How are soft drinks carbonated? Soft drinks are carbonated using pressurized CO2 gas and a siphon. That introduces the pressurized gas into the water or soda. The CO2 gas is forced into the liquid at a concentration beyond that which could exist under atmospheric conditions and then the container is sealed, preventing it from being released. That's why if you leave a glass of soda sitting out, it will go flat, the CO2 escapes into the air. What is the ionization energy of an atom? The ionization energy of an atom is the amount of energy it takes to remove an electron from the atom. The process of removing an electron leaves the atom with an extra proton. Relative to the number of electrons, and thus creates a positively charged ion, known as a cation. The ionization energy can be thought of as a measure of how strongly an atom holds onto its electrons. In general, ionization energies increase from left to right across a period, though there are exceptions. Due to an increasing number of protons to attract electrons in the valence shell, ionization energies decrease going down a group in the periodic table. Due to the valence electrons being farther from the nucleus, and thus more shielded from its positive charge. Note that the trends in atomic radii and ionization energy go in the same direction larger atoms tend to have lower ionization energies. Can elements be converted into one another? It is possible for atoms of one element to become atoms of another element. One way this can happen is any fission process that results in the loss of one or more protons from a nucleus. The joining of two nuclei to form a single heavier nucleus is also possible, and this process is known as fusion. Both fission and fusion can result in the creation of new atoms with different numbers of protons than were present before the reaction. These processes are often difficult to control in a laboratory, however. 
so it's mostly only in specific cases, such as energy production. That chemists and scientists in related fields devote a lot of time to these nuclear reactions. How do the boiling point and melting point of a substance change as a solute slash impurity is added? The addition of a solute typically raises the boiling point and lowers the melting point of a substance. These effects are appropriately named boiling point elevation and melting point depression. Boiling points are raised when a non-volatile solute, like NaCl, is added to a solution because the solute lowers the vapor pressure of the solution. That is a somewhat circular explanation though. It is important to know that this change in boiling point does not depend on what you add to the liquid. So there are no specific interactions going on here, like forming hydrogen bonds, etc. As long as the solute has lower vapor pressure, remember we said it was non-volatile. So its vapor pressure is essentially zero, this effect will be present. It is perfectly correct to think about it as just lowering the vapor pressure of the mixture. If you add something with very low vapor pressure, the average vapor pressure of whatever liquid you're adding it to will go down. Melting, or freezing, points are usually lowered when a solute is added to a liquid. The best explanation for this effect is based on entropy, see physical and theoretical chemistry. When a molecule of solvent moves from the liquid to the solid phase, freezes, the amount of liquid solvent, i.e., its volume, is reduced. This means the same amount of solute is in a smaller space, which reduces their entropy, or raises their energy. This raising of energy means that you have to take even more energy out of the system for each molecule that joins the solid phase. Less energy means lower temperature, so adding a solute lowers the freezing point. An alternative way to look at this is that any impurity will disrupt the crystal lattice. Raising its energy, relative to the liquid phase. This also contributes to lowering the freezing point as solutes are added. What makes mercury so dangerous? Mercury can be absorbed through the skin, making it particularly dangerous to handle. Organometallic mercury compounds, like dimethylmercury, CH3HGCH3, are particularly dangerous and have caused the deaths of a number of laboratory research chemists. Most research on this most toxic of mercury compounds has ceased. Be careful cleaning up that broken thermometer. What is a molecule? A molecule is a set of atoms held together by chemical bonds. Molecules are the smallest units of a substance that behave as that substance. And separating the atoms of a molecule will change its properties.
What is a glass? A glass is a non-crystalline solid it lacks order in the solid state. In polymer chemistry, scientists are concerned with the glass transition temperature. Tg, which is the temperature at which a material changes from a hard to a rubbery state. What's neat about this transition is that the material is not changing phases. I.e from solid to liquid, but is changing from one type of solid to another. How do the atomic radii of atoms change across the table? The atomic radii of atoms generally decrease going from left to right across a period. And increase going top to bottom down a group, see graphic on next page. The increase in atomic radius going down a group is fairly straightforward to understand. Additional shells of electrons are added and they must surround the inner shells, resulting in an increased atomic radius. Though the number of protons in the nucleus increases going down a group. The inner shells of electrons serve to shield the valence shell from the attractive force of the nucleus. Resulting in an overall increase in atomic radius. Moving to the right across a period, the number of protons increases. Increasing the attractive force on electrons in the valence shell. Within a period, additional electrons go into the same valence shell. And an increasing attractive pull from the nucleus results in a more contracted valence shell, resulting in a smaller atomic radius. The situation is complicated by the rightmost group, known as the noble gases. But the atomic radius of these elements is typically not important as they are rarely involved in chemical bonds to other atoms. What is the valence shell of electrons? Electrons fill up orbitals in shells. The innermost shell consists of just one S-type orbital and can hold just two electrons. The next shell consists of one S-type and three type orbitals, and can hold eight electrons. Higher shells consist of more and more orbitals and can thus hold more and more electrons. The valence shell of electrons is the highest occupied, or partially occupied, set of orbitals. What is a substituent? A substituent is an atom, or group of atoms, attached to a specific position in a molecule. For example, in the molecule 3-bromopentane, see drawing below. We could refer to the bromine as a substituent on the third carbon atom. What molecular properties lead to higher boiling points? There are a few factors that play important roles in boiling points of substances. The first is molecular weight, in general, 
heavier molecules have higher boiling points. Which is pretty straightforward considering how we defined boiling point above. Heavier molecules take more energy to move from the liquid to the gas phase. All other properties that affect boiling point deal with intermolecular forces. Or interactions between molecules. Think of this like the affinity of one molecule of a substance to be attracted to. Or stick to, another molecule. Non-covalent bonds, like ionic or hydrogen bonds, significantly increase boiling point. Why? Because to move to the vapor phase the molecules typically have to break these interactions. Dipole interactions and van der Waals forces have similar effects, see atoms and molecules. But these interactions are weaker, so the effect they have on boiling points is smaller. Finally, branching of the carbon backbone of a molecule is also frequently touted as a factor leading to lower boiling points. While this is true, it is really the weakening of van der Waals forces at work here too. What do atomic orbitals look like? There are three main shapes of orbitals relevant to most of chemistry. And these are referred to as S, P, and D orbitals. The designations S, P, and D are abbreviations for sharp, principal, diffuse, and fundamental. Which have historical significance describing results of early experiments to probe the electronic. Structure of atoms. You can see what these orbitals look like in the graphic on the preceding page. The shapes of these orbitals are determined by their orbital angular momentum. Which is a property that describes the motion of the electron around the nucleus. How many electrons can fit in each orbital? Each atomic orbital can contain up to two electrons. Electrons have a property called spin angular momentum. Which can take on two different values of opposite sign. It turns out that electrons residing in the same atomic orbital must have opposite spin angular momenta. This is a consequence of a physical principle known as the Pauli exclusion principle. Why does ice float? Ice floats in water because it is less dense than water, though this is actually a very unusual case in terms of comparing the densities of the solid and liquid phases for a given substance. Most substances increase in density when moving from the liquid to the solid phase of matter, but H2O does the opposite. When water freezes, it forms a network of hydrogen bonds between H2O molecules. And because of the spacing of the molecules in this lattice, ice is less dense and floats in water. What is a boiling point?
The technical definition of boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid phase equals the pressure of the surrounding gas, atmospheric pressure usually. This is a precise way of saying the temperature at which a liquid turns to vapor. What keeps an electron from crashing into the nucleus? Opposites attract, so electrons and protons are attracted to each other. Making it somewhat difficult to understand why an electron wouldn't just get as close as possible to the nucleus and crash into it. The key to answering this question has to do with the fact that electrons are very very small particles, so they are governed by rules that don't apply to larger objects. As we've talked about a little already, electrons are best thought of as clouds of negative charge surrounding the nucleus. Their properties are governed by rules that describe the cloud as a whole, rather than as a single particle. It turns out that there is something favorable about the electron being spread out, or delocalized, around a nucleus. For reasons we won't go into in detail, when the electron's cloud gets packed closer to the nucleus, the energy associated with its motion, its kinetic energy, begins to rise, which makes the situation unstable. There's a balance between the stability associated with placing the electron close to the nucleus. The favorable positive negative charge attraction. And that associated with spreading out the electron's cloud, to keep its kinetic energy low. This prevents the electron's cloud from getting too close to the nucleus or the electron just crashing into the nucleus. What are some chemical reactions that we can observe with our naked eye? There are lots of chemical reactions that we can easily detect by sight. Some examples are the formation of rust on metal, wood burning, fireworks exploding, silver becoming tarnished, or baking soda and vinegar reacting with one another. Why do helium balloons float? Helium balloons float because helium is less dense than air. So gravity pulls down on air more than it does on the helium balloon. The difference in density is enough that the displaced air supports the weight of the balloon and makes it float, up, up, and away. Why do helium balloons float? Helium balloons float because helium is less dense than air. So gravity pulls down on air more than it does on the helium balloon. The difference in density is enough that the displaced air supports the weight of the balloon and makes it float, up, up, and away.
What is dry ice, and why does it evaporate from the solid phase? Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide, CO2. At constant atmospheric pressure we see that an increase in temperature will bring it from the solid phase directly to the gas phase. This process is called sublimation, and it takes place at minus 78.5 degrees Celsius. What is dry ice, and why does it evaporate from the solid phase? Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide, CO2. At constant atmospheric pressure we see that an increase in temperature will bring it from the solid phase directly to the gas phase. This process is called sublimation, and it takes place at minus 78.5 degrees Celsius. How far away can one molecule feel another? Molecules feel one another through the intermolecular forces they exert on one another. These typically span lengths that are a little longer than the length of chemical bonds. Or something in the neighborhood of 5x10 to 10 meters. How far away can one molecule feel another? Molecules feel one another through the intermolecular forces they exert on one another. These typically span lengths that are a little longer than the length of chemical bonds. Or something in the neighborhood of 5x10 to 10 meters. What elements are in your body? Six elements make up all but 1% of the human body by mass. In decreasing order, they are, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. Oxygen and hydrogen are so prevalent because of most of our cells are over 50% water. What elements are in your body? Six elements make up all but 1% of the human body by mass. In decreasing order, they are, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. Oxygen and hydrogen are so prevalent because of most of our cells are over 50% water. What elements are in our food? Our food is made up of pretty much the same elements that we are. Which makes sense because at some point, the elements in our food literally become the elements in our bodies. We are what we eat.
What elements are in our food? Our food is made up of pretty much the same elements that we are. Which makes sense because at some point, the elements in our food literally become the elements in our bodies. We are what we eat. What's special or different about organic foods? While the precise definition is still changing. Everyone agrees that organic foods are those grown without the use of pesticides or synthetic fertilizers. The organic label also frequently excludes the use of irradiation and genetically modified fruits and vegetables. Whether the food tastes better, or is healthier to eat, is for you, or at least someone other than us, to say. What's special or different about organic foods? While the precise definition is still changing. Everyone agrees that organic foods are those grown without the use of pesticides or synthetic fertilizers. The organic label also frequently excludes the use of irradiation and genetically modified fruits and vegetables. Whether the food tastes better, or is healthier to eat, is for you, or at least someone other than us, to say. What gives a food its taste? Molecules, of course. You probably learned in school that there are four basic tastes, sweet, bitter, sour, and salty. Your science textbook probably also had a diagram like the one on the following page. Showing that your bitter taste buds are located on the back of your tongue, and sweet is tasted on the tip. Wrong. 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 Not only are there at least five basic tastes, but they're basically spread out evenly across your tongue. The five basic tastes are the four you know from elementary school. And umami. If you grew up eating Western cuisine, umami tastes like message, or maybe you just think Asian food. There is debate as to whether there is a sixth basic taste bud that senses fat. Or maybe another sensor for pickens, spiciness. But not even those five, or six, or seven. Basic tastes fully account for all the sensations you get during eating. Wine is probably the best example, if you drink wine, of course. What gives a food its taste? Molecules, of course. You probably learned in school that there are four basic tastes, sweet, bitter, sour, and salty. Your science textbook probably also had a diagram like the one on the following page. 
showing that your bitter taste buds are located on the back of your tongue, and sweet is tasted on the tip. Wrong. 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 Not only are there at least five basic tastes, but they're basically spread out evenly across your tongue. The five basic tastes are the four you know from elementary school. And umami. If you grew up eating Western cuisine, umami tastes like message, or maybe you just think Asian food. There is debate as to whether there is a sixth basic taste bud that senses fat. Or maybe another sensor for pickens, spiciness. But not even those five, or six, or seven. Basic tastes fully account for all the sensations you get during eating. Wine is probably the best example, if you drink wine, of course. What makes wine taste dry? The dry taste certainly doesn't fall into one of the five basic groups. But it is known to be related to the presence of tannins. What makes wine taste dry? The dry taste certainly doesn't fall into one of the five basic groups. But it is known to be related to the presence of tannins. So is there a tannin taste bud? No one knows yet. So is there a tannin taste bud? No one knows yet. What makes something poisonous? There are many ways to seriously disrupt our biological machine. Carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin and prevents oxygen from getting to our cells. Cyanide shuts down the production of ATP in mitochondria. Hemlock is a weed that contains a mixture of at least eight rather toxic molecules that target the nervous system. Thallium ions, TL+, are particularly toxic because they are highly water-soluble and once in the body. They bind to ion channels and disrupt other processes that normally function with potassium ions, K+. What makes something poisonous? There are many ways to seriously disrupt our biological machine. Carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin and prevents oxygen from getting to our cells. Cyanide shuts down the production of ATP in mitochondria. Hemlock is a weed that contains a mixture of at least eight rather toxic molecules that target the nervous system. 
Thallium ions, Tl+, are particularly toxic because they are highly water-soluble and once in the body. They bind to ion channels and disrupt other processes that normally function with potassium ions, K+. Do pesticides make food more dangerous? Pesticides certainly don't help make food safer. But their adverse long-term effects are difficult to measure. Limiting exposure as much as possible is certainly a good idea. Do pesticides make food more dangerous? Pesticides certainly don't help make food safer. But their adverse long-term effects are difficult to measure. Limiting exposure as much as possible is certainly a good idea. What gives a substance its smell? Substances smell because your nose, or olfactory system, is able to detect the volatile molecules that are being released. Your nose has roughly 350 different receptors that detect molecules and then send a signal up through various parts of your olfactory system, ultimately ending up in your brain. A smell doesn't come from a single receptor firing off a signal, but rather a whole array of receptors. Your brain takes the combination of signals it receives and translates that into the perception of the odor. What gives a substance its smell? Substances smell because your nose, or olfactory system, is able to detect the volatile molecules that are being released. Your nose has roughly 350 different receptors that detect molecules and then send a signal up through various parts of your olfactory system, ultimately ending up in your brain. A smell doesn't come from a single receptor firing off a signal, but rather a whole array of receptors. Your brain takes the combination of signals it receives and translates that into the perception of the odor. What makes oil more slippery than water? The purpose of lubricants, like motor oil, is to reduce the friction between surfaces. So that parts last longer and less energy can be expended in the process of moving them. The key to a good lubricant is that the characteristic length scale for the formation of a thin film of the lubricant must be much smaller than the characteristic length scale of movement in the application. Basically, oils are good lubricants because they can form very thin films that persist even when the parts they serve to lubricate are constantly in motion. 
This ability to form thin films typically correlates with other properties that are easier to recognize. For example, good lubricants often have a high boiling point, low freezing point, high viscosity, and are stable toward chemical oxidation and changes in temperature. What is a stable octet? The term stable octet describes the fact that many atoms in molecules are most stable when the valence shell contains effectively 8 electrons. This counts both non-bonding electrons and electrons in chemical bonds between atoms. Molecules tend to be most stable when the valence shells of each atom in the molecule contain 8 electrons. In the Lewis structures for F2 and CH2O, see the previous question. We see that the fluorine, carbon, and oxygen atoms are each surrounded by 8 electrons. We get this total by adding both the non-bonding and bonding electrons. Since hydrogen atoms are in the first row and have just a single orbital in their valence shell. They only need two electrons, a single bond, to fulfill their analog of a stable octet. What gives a substance its smell? Substances smell because your nose, or olfactory system is able to detect the volatile molecules that are being released. Your nose has roughly 350 different receptors that detect molecules and then send a signal up through various parts of your olfactory system, ultimately ending up in your brain. A smell doesn't come from a single receptor firing off a signal, but rather a whole array of receptors. Your brain takes the combination of signals it receives and translates that into the perception of the odor. How long are chemical bonds? Chemical bonds are typically about two atomic radii in length. Since they are formed from two atoms joined together. These distances are on the order of 10 to 10 meters. What elements are in our food? Our food is made up of pretty much the same elements that we are. Which makes sense because at some point, the elements in our food literally become the elements in our bodies. We are what we eat. How do planes stay in the air? Airplanes are very heavy, so the force required to balance gravity and keep them in the air must be large. The engines propel the airplane forward, but we need to understand what gives the upward push or lift necessary to keep the plane in the air. This lift comes from the shape of the wings, 
which are typically curved on the top and flat on the bottom. This design requires air to flow more rapidly over the top of the wings than over the bottom, which creates a lower air pressure above the wing than below. The lower air pressure above the wing is what lifts the plane off the ground and keeps it in the air. This is commonly referred to as the Bernoulli principle. If you blow across the top of a sheet of paper, you will see it lift into the air for the same reason. How much space does the nucleus take up? The nucleus of an atom takes up a very, very small fraction of the total space occupied by the atom. The diameter of a nucleus is on the order of 100,000 times smaller than that of a whole atom. Why do helium balloons float? Helium balloons float because helium is less dense than air. So gravity pulls down on air more than it does on the helium balloon. The difference in density is enough that the displaced air supports the weight of the balloon and makes it float, up, up, and away. So is there a tannin taste bud? No one knows yet. What is polarity and how is it related to molecular structure? Polarity is related to the symmetry of the arrangement of electron density in a molecule. Polar molecules are those which possess a net dipole moment which means that the electron density is not symmetrically distributed in all directions. Nonpolar molecules have the electron density distributed in such a way that there is no net dipole moment. Typically this doesn't mean that nonpolar molecules have their electron density distributed evenly over every part of the molecule, but rather that the dipole moments created by an unequal sharing of electrons in each individual bond cancel each other out. So that there is no net direction in which an asymmetry of electron density exists. What are molecular orbitals? Molecular orbitals are different from atomic orbitals in that they cover several atoms and possibly even a whole molecule. While atomic orbitals originate from a single atom, molecular orbitals are formed from combinations of the atomic orbitals because they allow electrons to occupy the space between the atoms in a molecule. They can provide a very useful description of chemical bonds holding atoms together. What is dry ice, and why does it evaporate from the solid phase?
Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide, CO2. At constant atmospheric pressure we see that an increase in temperature will bring it from the solid phase directly to the gas phase. This process is called sublimation, and it takes place at minus 78.5 degrees Celsius. What makes wine taste dry? The dry taste certainly doesn't fall into one of the five basic groups. But it is known to be related to the presence of tannins. What is a dielectric constant? The dielectric constant of a material characterizes the extent to which it insulates against the flow of charge or against the effects of an electric field. Materials with a high dielectric constant screen the effects of charges within the material. While materials with a low dielectric constant allow the effects of a charge to be felt more strongly. In solutions containing ions, the dielectric constant of the solution will determine the extent to which the other molecules in the solution feel the effects of the charges present. The lowest possible dielectric constant exists in a vacuum in which there is no material present to screen the charge of a field. What is the charge of a molecule? The overall charge of a molecule is determined by the number of protons and electrons in the whole molecule. If there are more protons than electrons, the molecule will possess an overall positive charge. If there are more electrons than protons, the molecule will similarly possess an overall negative charge. A molecule with the same number of electrons and protons is neutral and has no net charge. What makes something poisonous? There are many ways to seriously disrupt our biological machine. Carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin and prevents oxygen from getting to our cells. Cyanide shuts down the production of ATP in mitochondria. Hemlock is a weed that contains a mixture of at least eight rather toxic molecules that target the nervous system. Thallium ions, Tl+, are particularly toxic because they are highly water-soluble and once in the body. They bind to ion channels and disrupt other processes that normally function with potassium ions, K+. How far away can one molecule feel another? Molecules feel one another through the intermolecular forces they exert on one another. These typically span lengths that are a little longer than the length of chemical bonds. Or something in the neighborhood of 5x10 to 10 meters.
Do pesticides make food more dangerous? Pesticides certainly don't help make food safer. But their adverse long-term effects are difficult to measure. Limiting exposure as much as possible is certainly a good idea. Why does putting salt on the road help to melt snow? Like we discussed, when a solute is added to a solution, its freezing point is lowered. When salt is placed on snow, it begins to dissolve into any small amount of water on the ice with which it is in immediate contact. This lowers the freezing point of the surrounding water slash ice, causing it to melt into the water. This process continues until the salt is completely dissolved. How are formal charges different? Formal charges are given for individual atoms within molecules. These are determined by dividing the electrons in every bond equally between the atoms that share them. Regardless of the elements involved. What prevents all of the air from escaping Earth's atmosphere? gravity. Every molecule on Earth is pulled toward the planet by gravity, even the very lightest gas molecules. To overcome a planet's gravitational pull, an object, be it a spaceship or a helium atom, must reach at least the escape velocity. Almost all of the molecules in the atmosphere are below this velocity because of the temperature of the planet Earth, higher temperature equals faster molecules. Almost all? Yes. Earth is very slowly losing its atmospheric gases. The lightest ones go first about 3 kilograms of H2 escape the gravitational pull of Earth per year. A few particles can escape because kinetic energy of gases is a Boltzmann distribution. And in a Boltzmann distribution there are always very small probabilities of very high values. What gives a food its taste? molecules, of course. You probably learned in school that there are four basic tastes, sweet, bitter, sour, and salty. Your science textbook probably also had a diagram like the one on the following page. Showing that your bitter taste buds are located on the back of your tongue, and sweet is tasted on the tip. Wrong. 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 Not only are there at least five basic tastes, but they're basically spread out evenly across your tongue. The five basic tastes are the four you know from elementary school. And umami. If you grew up eating Western cuisine, umami tastes like message, or maybe you just think Asian food.
there is debate as to whether there is a sixth basic taste bud that senses fat. Or maybe another sensor for pickens, spiciness. But not even those five, or six, or seven. Basic tastes fully account for all the sensations you get during eating. Wine is probably the best example, if you drink wine, of course. What properties influence solubility? The most significant properties are intermolecular forces and temperature. If there are favorable interactions between the solute and the solvent, solubility will be higher. This is actually a balance of the interactions of the solute with the solvent and the stability of the solute in the solid phase. Temperature also influences solubility, and for most substances. Solubility increases as the temperature of the solvent rises. How much space does an atom occupy? The atomic radius of the smallest atom, hydrogen, is 53 x 10 to 12 meters, so it is about 10 to 10 meters in size. The atomic radius of the largest atom, cesium, is about 270 x 10 to 12 meters, or roughly five times that of hydrogen. These are all very, very small sizes. What gives a substance its color? The color of a substance is the combination of the light that is reflected back at your eye. In other words, you're seeing the light that is not absorbed by the substance. Certain frequencies can be absorbed because of the electronic structure of a substance. While others simply bounce off back into your eye. What are the basic units of length? Almost every length scale used in science is based on the meter. Chemistry frequently deals with very small lengths, so while you're probably familiar with millimeters, 10 to 3m, it's hard to have an intuitive sense about just how small a nanometer, 10 to 9m, is. There's another length scale commonly used when talking about chemical bonds the angstrom. An angstrom, A, is one ten billionth of a meter, 10 to 10 m. The lengths of chemical bonds vary depending on the elements and other factors. But are usually around 1 to 2 a. What is molecular orbital theory? Molecular orbital theory is the other main theory, the first was valence bond theory. Used to explain and predict bonding properties in molecules. 
Molecular orbital theory describes bonding interactions by using molecular orbitals that are spread out over multiple atoms. And this allows an electron's location to be described. By an orbital that bonds atoms together in a more realistic way than valence bond theory. What is electronegativity? Electronegativity is a property that describes the tendency of an atom to attract electrons in a chemical bond. The most electronegative atoms are those which pull hardest. On the electron density they share in a bond with another atom. There is more than one scale and definition for electronegativity. And our description here follows that given by Linus Pauling, which is the most commonly used scale in chemistry courses. Electronegativity can most readily be described in terms of the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom and the distance to which its valence electron cloud extends away from the nucleus. As a general trend, the most electronegative atoms are those with the shortest distance between the valence electrons and the nucleus. Electronegativity isn't a physical quantity that can be directly measured. But several scales have been developed that derive values for this property based on other measurable physical quantities. What's special or different about organic foods? While the precise definition is still changing. Everyone agrees that organic foods are those grown without the use of pesticides or synthetic fertilizers. The organic label also frequently excludes the use of irradiation and genetically modified fruits and vegetables. Whether the food tastes better, or is healthier to eat, is for you, or at least someone other than us, to say. What is the composition of air? Earth's atmosphere is made up of 78% nitrogen, N2, and 21% oxygen, O2, if you ignore water vapor, which shifts too much to include in averages for the entire planet. The last 1% is made up of mostly argon, AR, followed by carbon dioxide, CO2, and other trace gases. What is a Lewis structure? Lewis structures are a simple way of depicting the electronic structure of atoms and molecules. They show us which atoms are bonded to each other in a molecule and also show how Many non-bonded electrons are present in the valence electron shell of each atom. The easiest way to understand them is probably to just take a look at a few. The simplest Lewis structure is that for a single hydrogen atom. It has just one electron, and its Lewis structure looks like this. The letter H lets us know that it's a hydrogen atom, and the one dot represents its one electron. 
Here the two FS let us know there are two fluorine atoms. The line connecting them shows that they are bonded with a single bond, containing two electrons. Each has six more electrons surrounding it, and these electrons are non-bonding. And finally for a molecule with more than one bond, CH2O, this molecule is called formaldehyde. The Lewis structure shows us that the carbon is involved in a single bond, sharing two electrons. With each hydrogen atom, and a double bond, sharing four electrons, with the oxygen atom. The oxygen atom also has four non-bonding electrons. What is Coulomb's law? Coulomb's law tells us the force experienced by a pair of separated charges. It's a fundamental equation in the study of electrostatics. Which is a broad area of physics concerned with the interactions between stationary charges. The key features of Coulomb's law are that it predicts an attractive force between particles of opposite charge and that this force decreases with the square of the distance between the particles. For chemistry, it's relevant to point out that the force between charges falls off rather slowly with the distance between them, so where charges are present in relatively dense materials. Like liquids and solids, they have a significant effect on their environment. Can I think of chemical bonds as springs between atoms? Chemical bonds can be thought of as springs holding together the atoms in a bond. When atoms in a bond are stretched or compressed from their equilibrium separation, the bond provides a force to pull the atoms back together or to keep them from getting too close. For relatively small displacements, the bond actually provides a force. That is physically very similar to that of a spring connecting two objects. This model of a spring as a chemical bond can be very useful for getting an intuitive idea of how a chemical bond connects atoms in a molecule. What elements are in your body? Six elements make up all but one percent of the human body by mass. In decreasing order, they are, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. Oxygen and hydrogen are so prevalent because of most of our cells are over 50% water. What is valence bond theory? Valence bond theory is one of two main theories. The other being molecular orbital theory, that is used to explain bonding in molecules. Valence bond theory explains bonding by describing the interactions of atomic orbitals on individual atoms as they come together to form chemical bonds. The basic idea is that orbitals with the right shapes to overlap 
strongly with each other will form the strongest chemical bonds. Today, valence bond theory's description of chemical bonding based on Atomic orbitals has become less popular in favor of molecular orbital theory. What are the basic units of pressure? Unlike units of length and temperature, pressure is reported in at least six common units. The Pascal, abbreviated PA, is the official standard unit, but bar, millimeters of mercury, mmHg. Standard atmospheres, ATM, TOR, and pounds per square inch, psi, are all used in different areas. Why do some substances smell stronger than others? There are a couple of reasons that a substance might smell stronger than another. The first is volatility, or vapor pressure, of the molecule you smell. Simply, if there is more of it, it smells stronger. Additionally, some molecules interact more strongly with the receptors in your nose than others. Which results in a stronger smell sensation. Why do some substances smell stronger than others? There are a couple of reasons that a substance might smell stronger than another. The first is volatility, or vapor pressure, of the molecule you smell. Simply, if there is more of it, it smells stronger. Additionally, some molecules interact more strongly with the receptors in your nose than others. Which results in a stronger smell sensation. Which elements are liquids at room temperature? Actually there are only two elements that are liquids at room temperature, mercury and bromine. Bromine is a diatomic compound, Br2, while mercury is a liquid metal. Which elements are liquids at room temperature? Actually there are only two elements that are liquids at room temperature, mercury and bromine. Bromine is a diatomic compound, Br2, while mercury is a liquid metal. How dense is mercury compared to other liquids? The density of liquid mercury, it is a liquid at room temperature, is about 5.43 g slash ml. This is about five and a half times as heavy as water. One of the next most dense liquids is bromine with a density of 3.03 g slash ml. But mercury remains almost twice as dense.
How dense is mercury compared to other liquids? The density of liquid mercury, it is a liquid at room temperature, is about 5.43 g slash ml. This is about five and a half times as heavy as water. One of the next most dense liquids is bromine with a density of 3.03 g slash ml. But mercury remains almost twice as dense. How does the density of snow compare with that of liquid water? The density of recently fallen, damp snow is approximately one-tenth that of liquid water. This means that one centimeter of rainfall and ten centimeters of Snowfall contain approximately the same quantity of water molecules. How does the density of snow compare with that of liquid water? The density of recently fallen Damp snow is approximately one-tenth that of liquid water. This means that one centimeter of rainfall and ten centimeters of snowfall contain approximately the same quantity of water molecules. What is a surfactant? Surfactants are molecules that reduce the surface tension of a liquid. These are typically amphiphilic organic molecules. Which means that they have one hydrophobic and one hydrophilic section. This will cause them to align in a certain way at the surface of a liquid which interrupts the order of the liquid at the surface lowering the surface tension. What is a surfactant? Surfactants are molecules that reduce the surface tension of a liquid. These are typically amphiphilic organic molecules. Which means that they have one hydrophobic and one hydrophilic section. This will cause them to align in a certain way at the surface of a liquid which interrupts the order of the liquid at the surface, lowering the surface tension. What is precipitation? Precipitation is the formation of a solid in a solution. This happens when a substance has too low of a solubility to remain dissolved in the solution. This process can occur for a variety of reasons. Such as when a new product of a chemical reaction has low solubility or when a temperature change takes place. Precipitation begins when a small crystal begins to form, which is part of a process called nucleation. What is precipitation?
Precipitation is the formation of a solid in a solution. This happens when a substance has too low of a solubility to remain dissolved in the solution. This process can occur for a variety of reasons. Such as when a new product of a chemical reaction has low solubility or when a temperature change takes place. Precipitation begins when a small crystal begins to form, which is part of a process called nucleation.